Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. And in this episode, I really feel like I need to sort of delay, because we're waiting for improved flight control for better RCS thrusters. Actually, I think it's uh, in early docking procedures that we get those RCS thrusters. And we're also waiting for the R&D building upgrades so that we can unlock the lunar rated heat shield so I can finally take the lunar uh, flyby and orbit contracts. We have a rocket, I think, that's capable of doing that, though it'll be tight, of course, as it always is, and that's the fun of it. But, uh, yeah, but all that stuff comes up uh, in a little bit of time, and I don't have anything in particular to do, except for, as you can see, I've taken a flock of little contracts. Early weather satellite, early navigation satellite, second generation nav sat, and communication test satellite. And if we take a look, what I'm intending to do is, of course, fulfill all of them in the same launch. Uh, we need 175 units of CommSat payload. That goes to 4,500 to 7,336 kilometers apoapsis and above, let's say, 900 kilometers periapsis and above 39 degrees inclination. Then there's this early NAVSAT. Needs 60 units of NAVSAT payload and basically an orbit that's circular around 900 kilometers and inclination 64 to 70. Okay, but that's this one said above uh, 39, so if it's 64 to 70, that's fine. This one says 48 to 58. It needs a periapsis between 604 and 740 and needs a low eccentricity, so basically a circular orbit around 700. And that needs 77 units of weather sat payload. And then finally, this last one is another comsat one, but it needs 226 units. It's around 900 kilometers, but it needs the inclination between 68 and 72. So, here's the plan. Our initial inclination will be 57 degrees, and that will be aimed to be under this inclination right here. Now, this needs the orbit to be basically circular around 700 kilometers. So, we're going to go for that orbit first, fill this contract. And then we're going to boost the periapsis to 900 kilometers. And because this one needs it at 900 kilometers, and so does this one, right? Above 875, but below 925. And, um, but when we uh, boost it to 900 kilometers on the periapsis, we're also going to boost the apoapsis all the way up to 4,600 to satisfy this contract. See, this is above 900 kilometers and we need to boost up the apoapsis. The inclination will be at 57 at that point, so we'll fulfill this one. Then, at the apoapsis, we're going to change our inclination from 57 to 69. And then, at 69 degrees, we'll fulfill both this and this. And so, after we change our inclination, we'll bring the apoapsis back down to 900, and that'll satisfy both of these. So, that's the order of operations. Let's take a look at the rocket. All that depends on our engines actually working, of course. And here we have what I decided to call the Titania rocket because it's Titan tanks, but not really a Titan. We've got H1 engines, the four of them, and then the LR-105 on the second stage. And so uh, Titania was the queen of the fairies in Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare. Uh, but anyway, so that's the rocket. And then I'm taking advantage of this launch to once again get some data on our RD-58 and the AJ-10. And of course we've used them before, but uh, it's probably a good idea to get as many data units as we can before using them on a crude launch. So here we have a rocket. The first two stages down here are not going to be able to complete orbit. The RD-58 will have to finish up orbit and then uh, again reignite a couple of times because it has five ignitions and we're going to try and use them. Uh, we've got hydrazine here, and these thrusters are, let me check, yes, they're tuned to hydrazine. And hydrazine here, lots of hydrazine here, and uh, these, because lots of maneuvering to uh, happen, but, and maybe we'll use them as backup, but we've got delta V, maybe I'll put a touch less. Uh, it'll make me feel a little bit better if we could just eke out some extra delta V. If we put it all the way down, we could get 15,000 out of it, but, um... Uh, I don't know. It's tough to say exactly how much I need for this particular situation. Uh, the core is uh, set to 8.8 .8 tons, so that is sufficient for our upper stages. 
both of them. And uh, we've got the weather sap payload here, 77 units, and we had 77 required. On the outer ring, these four tanks are commsat payloads. We've got a total of 228 and it required 226. And finally, uh, navsat payload, 60 units, and it, requ it requested 60 units. So uh, the tank size, the reason the satellite looks like this is because of tooling. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, these are the tool diameter, the same tool diameter we've been using basically from the beginning. Uh, the 0.48 tooling, though, pushed to its limits here. And, of course, uh, this was the configuration that fit in the fairing. The AJ-10 sort of tucked in to that tank a bit, as it should be. Anyway, so it fits in the fairing just barely. And, yep, that is our quad mission. So let's try and get it done. And so that we make use of this time while we're waiting for other things to happen. And maybe we'll get more advanced contracts of the, these kinds something that pays a little bit better. Ah, uh, the fairings though. Well, anyway, here it is. The timing doesn't really matter as far as that's concerned. We're not lining with the moon or anything, and there's no good reason to do so. Um, I'll put it in the... well, I'm not using KOS, darn it. No, uh, this requires... this requires me because we might lose an engine. All right. Thrall up, SAS is on. That's mainly why I'm not using KOS, because of the engine loss issue. And my ability to compensate for that a little bit better than KOS might. So, yeah, we need to get to a certain inclination. Let's remember that. So I'm going to pre-type in 40. Uh, 45 will get you to a 51 degree inclination. I remember that from the ISS. So mostly I judge from that. It's probably like 35 or something to get to an inc inclination of 57 is what we want. Anything about 48 will be fine for the WeatherSat contract. And we're trying to get to basically 700 by 700 here. All right, ignition. And launch. Okay. We do have to stop pretty quick since the thrust weight ratio is fairly high. We are just going straight for pretty high periapsis. But I will pitch down now. Okay, set. Okay, looking good. I'm trying to make sure that we get to that uh, initial orbit. Uh, directly with only one ignition of the RP RD58, but I I don't know if I can do that. We'll see. We'll probably have to delay lighting the RD58. I don't know if we're gonna get there. Technically, the bottom load is 604, though. Maybe that's good enough, right there. Okay. Yeah, I think we can do that. Uh, we still need to get to 57 degrees, but, yep, yeah, that's good enough. Actually, we don't need to need to, it's just preferable, so that our inclination change doesn't have to be quite so much. All right, uh, separation, RCS on, and forward. Okay, good. Very good. And probably we packed too much RCS, but that's not too much of a problem right now. Okay, coasting. So it's very stable. All right, ignition. Hmm, we seem to be getting sunlight, but well, we aren't in time warp. But the the panels are only sufficient if this ABI core is in time warp in hibernation. So the first one we want is the weather sap payload. It reads it. And we need an eccentricity of below 0.01. Now, if I really wanted to be legit about it, I should probably dump the weather sap payload before moving on, but I don't want extra space junk. In fact, we might just deorbit the whole cluster before we're through. Depends on whether we have enough fuel or not. Okay. Uh, that should be everything. Yep. We just have to wait the two minutes, and we are done with this one. Okay. Yep, let's just wait. 
Okay, very good. That is satisfied. Now we need to... Oh, no, I don't need you to do anything right now. Uh, add apoapsis will boost our periapsis. And we want to boost it to 900 kilometers. Keep an eye on the electric charge. That and... Come on. And that and test flight are what can do damage to us now. We've got extra delta V, just in case it turns out that we have an engine failure. Okay, we just need 900. Of course, for the time being, that is our apoapsis. But once we get to periapsis, uh, once we get to that apoapsis, we're going to boost up to 4,600. This 900 has to be pretty precise because we've got a contract that wants it between 875 and 925, so we're back over to the United States. Right above Texas, in fact. Mm, ignition. I could do part of... Oh, the engine failed. Well, alright. See, well, that's why we packed the extra Delta V. Unfortunately, this won't deorbit. Alright. And that's very stable. Oh, that's more than enough. Okay, that should satisfy another contract. That's our commsat. Uh, yep, yeah, there it is. It's checking for the stable orbit. We've got the high apoapsis it wanted and an inclination above 39. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, let's make sure that we're recharging properly. This is not the best orientation. Okay, so now changing inclination to 69 degrees. Okay, that's close enough. I'm a little bit worried about our delta V. 900 meters per second. Is that enough to bring the periapsis back down? Make sure our periapsis is at 900 as planned. Okay, that's 900 kilometers and 69 degree inclination. We are going over to our periapsis to reduce our apoapsis and then basically we're done. Okay, looks good enough. Ignition. The AJ-10 sure a workhorse. I'm worried about when it's actually going to fail on us, though. Or were all my failures front-loaded with the AJ-10 early edition? Hmm, maybe. Those were sure frustrating. Those were frustrating enough to make me not want to see an AJ-10 again. Just enough, thanks to engine failure on the RD-58. That should actually be sufficient to fulfill the contracts. So let's see, that one's ticking down on the timer. And this one's ticking down. All right, that's that. Four contracts completed in a single mission. Good times. Uh, 200 meters per second, is that enough to deorbit this? Well, with the RCS, it's probably going to be enough. We've got plenty of hydrazine left if the main engine can't handle it. Let's do it. No need for space junk. Yeah, I mean, just barely got in the atmosphere with the 200. Let's get a little bit more convincingly down, though. Hopefully they give us a few more second gen or third gen or something that pays well now. I don't want any more early satellite contracts. Okay. Okay, disposal complete. Back to Space Center. Okay, so I've time warped a little bit and I've queued up lunar rated heat shields. However, I've got a bit of a question. Uh, lunar rated heat shields requires early landing, as far as I know, and I was able to move it up beyond it. So here's lunar rated heat shields and it says requires early landing. And so, yeah, I shouldn't be able to move it ahead of early landing, right? Right? <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know. Uh, that's probably going to create a bug anyway. I'm not going to risk it, but probably there should be a way to prevent me from doing just that right there. I think if I end up unlocking a technology higher in the... Even if it all works out and it starts unlocking, the fact that this unlocks before that will probably make the whole system have a cow. So I, I'm not going to risk it. I would like to not break my game. Um, as far as I know, the rest of the order of operations is fine. Interplanetary probes, maybe we don't need quite just yet, especially since we sort of have interplanetary probes already. So, yeah, I mean, it's a misnomer at the very least. Uh, interplanetary probes is here and it's not really in line with anything or nothing else requires it. So, yeah, advanced capsule area era material science is required for early landing so let's just make sure that's all proper yeah all right so this seems to be a correct order of operations but as a result we still need about 180 days to finish this off and that's a long time we'll have a venus window and of, of course these mars probes arriving hopefully will fulfill the mars flyby we should probably add another Mars window in there just in case, though I doubt we can fulfill that Mars contract with it. Uh, yeah, there's no way that Mars window is after that flyback contract is up. But anyway, yeah, uh, we've got our Venus probes constructing or constructed. And taking a look at our contracts, we're sort of out of luck on getting more advanced contracts here. We've got communica communication test satellite. Again, a test satellite. It's the same basic thing before. It's like the same apoapsis, a little bit higher periapsis and inclination, but not really substantially different. The weather sat, not really substantially different. Remember the 700 kilometer thing? Uh, yeah, and it's the same old drudgery. And this is basically the same contract. Uh, last time, I think it was 226 units at a 900 kilometer orbit. Now, of course, we do have this sample return mission hanging out here still, uh, but I would like to deal with that when we unlock the better RCS fuel and, of course, the better fuel for the one kilonewton thruster, the bipropellant fuels. I don't want to do that right now because I think it's probably pushing the limits a little bit uh, and we'll be handling it much better with those fuels. So yeah, we'll hold off on that. We could speed up our rate of science production, though we do have some funds. And liability-wise, we're clear except for the two flyby contracts, which are minimal. So no real big liabilities, though. Let's take a look at how much the, oh, the R&D building is going to cost two million to upgrade. Well, I mean, the human not human, Kerbal flyby of the moon uh, would probably be good enough for that. But where does that get us in terms of technology? Uh, so the upgrade will get us to 100. Well, it says it covers the lunar landing. So, you know, um, I'm all right with that. Okay. Yeah, all right. Now let's spend some science points. Let's speed that process up. Build points, I don't think we need. We're building them pretty darn quickly, as it is. Technology now, it's going to take, wait, that's 80, mm, 120, let's say. Still a while, but so about 150 days, but that's better than 180. So we cut a month down on that. All right, but I'm just going to go through and uh, do these Mars... Uh, maneuvers and then the Venus launches and then by that point we'll be able to aim for a Mars sample return mission. Okay so we're here with one of our Mars probes doing a mid-course adjustment of 2.9 meters per second and time warping yes electric charge is fine so let's just time warp to the node. Okay nope stop. Oh SAS is gonna take forever to activate. Right. Six minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. But I'm not having much luck here. Even though I'm doing it at a fairly good time. 
once again, just turning around to get the proper orientation with the sun is going to mess things up, though. All right, we have SAS on, and we are recharging, and our periapsis is good. Well, canceling command won't work. I'll just activate RCS afterwards. Okay, flight computer. All right. So we get to put our alarm for SOI change. 280 days. Still in time. So that's good. All right, we'll pay attention to the next Mars one. We did unlock some technology, but I don't think it was sufficient technology. Okay, we are here with Mars 1B. We had previously taken care of Mars 1C, and we are going to take care of its maneuver node, which hopefully should be less touchy. On the other hand, it's 314.4 meters per second, and we don't have much more than that. So if it doesn't work, we're in trouble. I'm going to try my best to do it accurately, and let's hope nothing else important has changed about its orbit since I plotted it. We'll keep an eye on the situation around Mars so that we don't do something silly. We've got an energy drain, but right now we're further away from the sun than we were ever ought to be. Um, we're up here at Apoapsis. And I don't think... Are we oriented properly? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> we're oriented horribly. Oh, shoot. And here I was saying I was going to do it accurately. <sighs> Talking away. Well, coming in on the opposite side, but I'll take that. Okay, stop. Uh, I say kill rotation. Oh, it's going to go into a crash course. That's fine, too. What we really need is to go back to a sun up situation. That brings us out, but hopefully when it slows down, the rotation will bring us back in. Okay, SAS is on. We have a good recharge rate. And this is all set. Let's take a look at, after all the turning, where it is at around Mars. Um, still within 20,000 kilometers, so that's satisfactory. And I'll add that SOI change alarm. Now we can launch for Venus. Okay, so here we are with our first Venus probe. And somebody had suggested an ascent descent add-on for MechJeb. And so we have this ascent start time thing here. I don't actually want to engage the ascent autopilot though, because it sucks. What I I just want it to give me the time. Uh, let me let me see if um, it can just tell me when to launch. Inclination. Well, let's see what it says for best. Well, sorry, our launch inclination is. I mean, that's not going to work out at all. Uh, uh, Forty-eight point five. Does it mean that? I don't know. Relative inclination. You know what? Forget all these numbers. I'll take the minimum relative inclination time. Thank you very much. Set destination body. Fill orbit altitude. Generate with initial guess. Okay, initial guess. Oh, okay. Well, that's different. Initial guess and tune buttons or fill departure and arrive. Well, okay. Well, it's got these things. Okay, well, it says current day is 5,422, so this is totally wrong. Is it telling me to launch south by 5 degrees? I don't think so. Anyway, if the current day is 5,422, that's, that's the day we're leaving, okay? Honestly, sorry, I don't understand what the heck this is trying to tell me. We have a transfer window. Technically, I passed one window just now. Travel time, it says 161 days. The window we're at right now is a little bit fast, uh, a little bit slower, so it takes about 180 days. So basically, I've got that in here. It should have calculated a synodic period itself. I'm expecting about that sort of delta V. That's certainly true. Again, I don't know what it's trying to tell me with the inclination. If it's telling me that I should get to a 2.6 degree, degree inclination, that's not happening. <laughs> and the number it gives for arrival doesn't make any sense when I tune the top one. 
Yeah, and it doesn't seem to understand this transfer window that we are at right now. Yeah, it doesn't even read the transfer window we're at right now. It doesn't know that uh, right now is a transfer window to Venus. This transfer window planner that gave me the window. I, uh, I, I don't have any confidence in it, really. I'm just gonna go line up with the moon and do the normal thing. If you're gonna give me numbers, you're gonna have to inspire some level of confidence that your numbers aren't complete nonsense. And probably being able to figure out that it's a transfer window in the first place would be a good start. Okay, on that note, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. I'm certainly not using MechGem's Ascent Guidance. If I want to have an automated launch, I'll just launch with KOS. Okay, booster engine set. And we're looking good so far. Okay, fairing separation. Basically the same as the Mars probe with some improvements. We are not using the RD-58 here, we're back to the somewhat more trustworthy RD-0109. We've got way more data on it, well, you know, just only 1,900 data units actually. Sure seems like it's more reliable though. I think the RD-58 or whatever, the 11D-33 variant of the RD-58 says it has a higher mean time before failure, but it sure doesn't act like it. Okay, getting ready for shutdown here. Ten seconds left on the stage. And shutdown 273 by 212. And separation. RCS is good. Alright, uh, let's make sure to tune this to Earth. And we're ready to go. Probably don't need to tune it right now because it's sucking up power, but... Okay. Now we'll target Venus. So yeah, MechJeb gets us a 3506.6 meter per second transfer, which is excellent and better than that one tool was promising. I wonder what it will say right now. Uh, no, don't engage the sent autopilot. No, don't do that. Um, tune all. No, eh, still says, uh, well, it, it wants it in seven days. It says boost from circular, 3,777 meters per second. Well, no. In fact, the situation as far as Delta V is concerned only gets better. But uh, to be fair, um, our orbit, uh, maybe, maybe we should go for like 240. Uh, no, that doesn't help the situation at all. So yeah, I don't know how this is calculating it, but we've got a node here. It costs 3,506.6. Beats me... Oh, 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 that's a bit close, actually. Um, it beats me how after I move forward, it catches up to us so quickly. Throttling up. And ignition. <laughs> All right, it lit. Maybe a bit early. Okay, SAS. It's gonna be a little bit tough shutting it down on time. I think we actually passed where it is by quite a lot. Okay, um, retro. Let's shut down the engine and just use the hydrazine. Well, it looks like a great transfer window for Venus, so we should probably launch another one pretty much immediately. A minor correction would be a good idea. I want to release the stage in a way that might be beneficial to us. We're at the descending node, more or less. Okay, alright. Still a lot of fuel down here, but... Oh, no, actually, no. We just ran out. Alright, separation. 
quite a bit of force there. And let's prep these. Ah, I went away. Okay, that would be sufficient. Let's add that alarm for the maneuver node. And this is all set. It is pointing at the sun, it's recharging right now even, and it's only going to get closer to the sun as we go along. So we can leave this be. Alright, so let's launch another one. Okay, we've lined up as before, and everything seems to be go. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. We have plenty of spare Delta V uh, in the transfer stage, considering what the transfer actually requires. Okay, booster engine set. And we were good through the boosters. Okay, getting ready for shutdown now. Okay, a little bit high on the apple apps. It's 322 by 204. And separation. And RCS. Okay, the plot is basically the same. And we are getting ready to ignite the engine. Uh, probably wait a little bit longer. Last time seemed a little bit early. Okay, now we'll throttle up. And ignition. Okay, this one has lit. Okay, let me just make sure we shut down as planned instead of looking at the map necessarily. Well, 8.4 is better than I did last time. And at least we have some sort of indication there. Okay, and I think it was earlier rather than too late, so that'll save us from having to turn around. So let's see if we can just throttle up on the RCS. Yes, it seems to be getting us closer. It's looking good, but now we're gonna have to turn and face the sun. <laughs> uh, or, and we have to separate too, geez. Uh, yeah, separation. I keep forgetting to tune down the decoupler. It's a tiny decoupler. Only 0.48 meters because that's the only decoupler size we've... we've, uh... tooled. Okay, separation. And... got that. Now, where are we? Now we don't even have an encounter anymore. I hate that. I hate that separate. Look at all how far away that is. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, stop, 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 stop. No. Okay, well, whatever. Um, let's face the sun. That's the important part. And then, oh, I've got a messed up sky. Um, sun. Up. And... Make sure that's working right. And once it turns around, then we'll see. We probably need a correction out in interplanetary space. Even though we could easily aim to hit Venus, it's just a matter of needing to face the sun. We'll pretty much always mess it up. I don't know, maybe we'll get within 20,000 kilometers here. Okay, lots of really touchy maneuvers today, but there we are. We'll add that alarm, and we've got two Venus probes on the way. So, with all of that business taken care of, I think I'll wrap it up here. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.